the nerve cell or neuron is the basic unit of the nervous system. They are composed of the following things. They have to have a cell body, an axon, they always have no more than one, maybe even none, and dendrites, possibly tons of these. So the three general areas, the three general components of a typical neuron are your cell body, your dendrites, and your axons. They are responsible for receiving and transmitting nerve impulses and forming long fibers by linking together. The two very important physiological properties of a neuron, of a nerve cell, is that they have to be excitable and they have to be able to conduct the signal. So in other words, they have to be able to respond to a stimuli, a change in the environment, and they have to send that change along down the, the chain of command. All right? So we have a, a nerve, a cell, that responds to a stimuli. And depending on the function or the purpose of that neuron, it will respond to different types of stimuli. So for example, you might have something called a mechanoreceptor, which uh, picks up mechanical changes in its environment, uh, touch, pressure, vibration. Then you might have something called a chemoreceptor, which picks up changes in chemicals. You might have a photoreceptor, which ch picks up changes in light. So these things must respond to a stimuli. They have to go, oh hey, there's something going on here, let me respond. And they have to be able to tell others about it. It would do no good if a nerve went, oh look, there's a light, and didn't pass it on. It has to conduct that information along down its chain. So excitable, and it has to conduct. The cell body, the cell body contains the nucleus, the granular cytoplasm, and most of the organelles responsible for cell maintenance. Notice that a cell body is just like a cell in your other studies. So when you look at the cell biology lessons, we talked about what a cell body is. We talked about what a cell is. We talked about what an organelle is. We have a nucleus, a nucleolus, we have uh, ER, rough ER, smooth ER, Golgi's, mitochondria, vesicles. We talked about all those things. Well, a neuron has a cell body. This is the command center, it's a central location, and you're going to find a lot of the organelles that you would find in a normal cell present within a neuron cell body. One of the unique things that you're going to find is something called the nissel body. These are unique structures to the neuron, meaning that they're only found in the neuron, and they're going to be clusters of rough ER. So if you're looking at a, a sample of tissue under a microscope, and you see little contained rough spots, little contained uh, different colored areas in the cell body, you know you're looking at the neuron, and we have a graphic up so you can see what I'm so eloquently not explaining very correctly. But this is very unique to the cell body of a neuron. It is a cluster of rough ER, and it makes and releases proteins. Then we have something called a dendrite. The dendrite are these projections that come off the neuron. I always like to think of the, the boxing promoter. For those of you from the 80s, you remember Mike Tyson? Well, he had a boxing promoter named Don King. Don King had this crazy hair, and I always like to think, I don't know why, but I always like to think of the dendrites being Don King's haircut, just crazy hair sticking straight up. Well, that's what a dendrite is. It's just sticking out, there's a whole bunch of them, and they're there to receive signals. They're out there waiting for information to come to them to bring it back. So the dendrites receive the information and pass it down through the rest of the nerve cell. They are multi-branch portions which receive impulses and bring them towards the cell body. These short cell processes increase the surface area available for connection with other neurons. Then we have the axon. The axon is the tail of the neuron. And what's going to wind up happening there is this is where the signal travels down. This is going to propagate the signal down the neuron to wherever else it's supposed to go. In other videos, we'll talk about how a nerve impulse is transmitted down a nerve. But just know for right now, a dendrite, in general, receives the information, and it's going to pass that information down an axon, down the tail of the neuron. 
Axons are long cell processes stretching from cells, often over long distances. You can have an axon going from your head all the way down to your feet, so they can go for quite some time. They often arise from a slight elevation of the cell body called the axonal hillock, and they are uniform in diameter. You can have branches of these called collaterals. Then we have axon, axonal transport. We have to be able to move substances along the axon. We can have either fast or slow. Materials can move down the axon away from the cell body. This is called antegrade, away from antegrade. And we can also have it going the other way. All materials move along something called microtubules. So as I just said, we have two types of transport. We have fast and we have slow. Fast transport moves around two, uh, 20 to 400 millimeters per day may be anterograde or retrograde, meaning they can either move up the axon or down the axon. The anterograde, the mitochondria, synaptic vesicles, calcium ions, to name a few things. So these are things moving away from the cell body. Retrograde use synaptic vesicles, information from the axonal terminals. So what this does is it brings information from the bottom of the axon back to the cell body. It lets the cell know what's going on down in its tail. Some diseases will take advantage of fast transport, for example, rabies, herpes, tetanus, and of course the dreaded zombie virus, which is why if you get bit you turn so quickly. Hopefully we're just making that part up. Hopefully. Then we have slow transport. Slow transport is around 0.5 to 10 millimeters to, uh, per day. It is only antegrade. It's stop and go. So it's stop and go down the axon towards the bottom, towards the base of the axon. So it's going to go from the top to the bottom, from the, from the cell body all the way down to the end of the axon. It's a stop and go motion, moves enzymes and cytoskeleton components down the axon. It fixes axonoplasmic components. Axon repair is regulated by the slow transport. So when you start talking about axon repair or nerve repair, it's dictated by slow transport. Slow transport is this little train that goes from one station to another station to another station down the axon bringing supplies, bringing supplies for repair. And so let's say that uh, I'm in North Virginia, so I'm relatively close to Washington, D.C. And let's say that we have repairs from D.C. out to California. Well, between D.C. and California, we have a lot of stops along the way. And so let's say that something in California needs to be repaired. Well, it's going to take a while to get there. If we have something in Maryland that needs to be repaired, well, it's going to take a while anyways. It's coming from D.C. Um, but I'm pumped. But it's going to be a lot faster for that repair to happen. So slow transport, fast transport. Fast transport can move things down or back up. Slow transport can only move things down, integrate away from the cell body. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the classification of the neurons.